Ladies and gentlemen, there's that face, that wizened face in her elderly years has a certain wisdom about it. Oh, yeah, right. So it's yeah. such a wise old woman. <laughs> yeah. When I was married to her, she was just another hippie. Anyway. <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. I was never a hippie. I was a beatnik. Well, yeah, but I, I have a picture of you where you're dressing more like a, like, you know, the problem is, I got to tell you, this is Ronnie Bennett, by the way, in case you didn't notice, that's my ex-wife, my second ex-wife. Um, and she, uh, um, uh, I have pictures of you uh, wearing what I consider hippie garb, but what I noticed is that throughout the years, you had to dress to the times because you couldn't buy clothes of any other kind. It was like... I wore, I actually, I hated platform shoes, but I actually had to wear a pair because that's all you could buy at one point. You know? They do that. You know, the opposite problem is that yeah. every woman, do ask any woman you run into, we can't get clothes. Our clothes don't have pockets like men's do. So we can't put our cell phone in our pocket. It has to be in our hand or in our handbag. So you never can find it. I'm going to go back to wearing a watch because I can never find it in my handbag and I don't know what time it is wherever I am. Uh, and I think that's a, a giant um, a problem, I guess, for women. But clothes manufacturers are the ones that make that decision. And you bring it up with any group of women and all of them will say, yes, yes, pockets. Yes, yes, pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, um, um, yeah, men have always had pockets, uh, and it makes it pretty easy. But a lot of coats you buy today have little pockets in them for phones. I mean, they have kind of f take a phone. I have like I'm a not talking about a special coat. Yeah. I'm talking about normal everyday clothes: okay. a sweater, a jacket, a pair of pants. No pockets for women, or so tiny you can't put. If you tried to put your phone in, it would fall out. Yeah. Just, well, it's really irritating. Well, you have one advantage. You don't have a prostate. So I, I consider that an advantage for women. And how is yours this week? Well, it's, <laughs> I start my radiation on Monday. Oh, I thought you'd done it. We were going to no. hear all about it today. Oh, no, no, no. I, I have. I start, it, it's really funny. Starting Monday, I have radiation every other day for five days. Okay. So for a week and a half, I'm going to. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Monday and Wednesday. Sunday? No, I think it's Monday and Wednesday. I I think they actually let the radiation machine take a day off. I don't know. But anyway, and then uh, they do the seeds. But in between, I have to go month Tuesday to my dentist because she found a fractured filling in a back tooth that may be too close to a nerve and we may have to do a root canal. So what will happen is on Monday, I do radiation. Tuesday, I do root canal. <laughs> Wednesday, I do radiation. Thursday, you know... Is welcome that, to my life. Yes, welcome to Ronnie's I life. You, what, you know, my rehab after three months is coming to an end on Tuesday. Yeah. And I have, in my old age and post-major surgery, I have about seven to eight hours a day that I'm functional, that I can think and I can write and I can go places yeah. and do things. Yeah. That's it. Most people have 15 or 16 I only have seven or eight. So then what happened? Rehab comes along twice a week for the past three months. Yeah. And with the travel time and the workout time there and coming back, it takes four hours out of those two days. Yeah. So each one of them. So I'm losing eight, another eight hours a week out of my life that all kinds of things don't get done because... I still run out of energy by two two thirty. You still you know, have you, and you still have a blog to put out. You you know you still have to maintain that. How about just the dishes and the laundry and clean up the house and meet a friend for lunch and that sort of thing? Something I've hardly seen. And I finally saw a friend I haven't seen in all this time on Friday for lunch. What is today? Saturday? Yes, yesterday for lunch, and it had been the longest time. So. I understand what you're up against. That you've got can somewhere I, to be every yeah. single day. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I can I say something which is uh, uh, very true? I, you know, I uh, when you first said that the cancer had come back and all of that, uh, I expected to see a woman who, over the weeks that we would be talking, would be deteriorating. 
Every time we talk, you look better than the time before. Oh, I don't. I mean, I just look like an old lady, you know? No, you look uh, great. I mean, you, uh, you, 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 you're looking terrific. You're looking healthy. Well, the thing is that, you know, I, I think I've used this line with you, yeah. is that if I yeah. didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Right. Um, it's the COPD that is the bigger problem of yeah. dated living. Yeah. Um, you know, in a couple of weeks, I've forgotten when exactly, I have a new test and see the oncologist, and I always start to get nervous when that's coming because who knows what the cancer has done, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you go through, I'm sure everybody who's been in my position, it's like that it is, I get a little pain here or somewhere, and oh my God, what's the cancer doing to me? <laughs> There's no way to know, so you just have to move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's always a little shadow back there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but it, but it, it, you just you look terrific, you know. I, uh, and I don't know why it why why you aren't starting to look worse, you know. You I think I know. you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, the day will come, I mean, you know. What are you going to say to me when that day comes? Well, I don't know. It may come for me earlier than it comes. I, I have a funny feeling you may be around long after me. I just have that feeling, you know. I know, you know, that doesn't, feelings are well, You're going to say, why is not, uh, I, Alex was supposed to call me today. Why isn't he calling? And then you're going to finally call my number and Marjorie will pick him and say, well, he had a heart attack last night, you know. I mean, I had that happen. Uh, many, and what kind of heart problems do you have? I don't have any that's going to kill me. Yeah, that's right. I've, I've had my heart checked. I have a stenosis, a mild stenosis, which he says if it keeps progressing at the rate it's been progressing, uh, I'll be dead at 150. What does <laughs> stenosis mean? It's a hardening of the uh, aorta. Oh, okay. It's a thickening not, of the... I mean, does, the does, does that word only apply to... A heart, or does it apply to other things? Uh, stenosis. Uh, you can get uh, uh, Marjorie. I think has stenosis in her back. So it's a medical term. It's a hardening. A it's a harden. Yeah, it's a hardening of something. Okay. Yeah. In this case, it's a mild aortic stenosis. Okay. okay. So, whatever. Anyway, so I, you know, um, but I'm. I can use this in my court case. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Judge. I have to take a break. I have cancer. You know. And then go do whatever I have to do. Uh, you know, you can use those as excuses. That and pull the senior card. That's always a good one, too. You know. No, I can't remember. I'm, uh, that was too long ago for me. You know me? I'm old. I don't remember. You know. What? I did something <laughs> wrong? I didn't know I was doing something wrong. Excuse me. I'm an old man. You know what? We're terribly lucky to be as healthy as we are, given... All the, even the things that are wrong yeah. with us medically. We're very lucky at this. I mean, you're past 80, and I'm coming up on it in a little over a year. And, uh, you know, we're doing pretty well, given all the things that could happen. Yeah. Can I talk to you about something that happened to me today? I think yes. you might find this interesting. I'm at Costco. I'm wheeling my cart around. Where and, is Costco in Manhattan? Uh, Costco is over on 117th Street and the uh, uh, East Side Highway. Oh, so you have to go way across town. Yeah, but it's not that big a deal. I'm, I'm there in oh. 10 minutes, okay, by cab or uh, lift or whatever I take. Anyway, um, I'm wheeling my cart around, and I'm, I'm turning an aisle, and I tap somebody else's cart. That always happens, uh, you know, because especially in a crowded Saturday, Costco. You're gonna you do it during the week, you know. And you yeah, yeah I know, but but yeah. that's not the story. So I tap the cart and I just kind of move on because I've got my earphones on and I'm listening to my music. And this guy starts yelling behind me. You didn't say I'm sorry. <laughs> and I turn around. It's this black guy. And I go up to him. And I said, "What's your problem?" He said, "You didn't say you were sorry." I said, "I just tapped your cart, sir." I, you know, he says. You're a racist. Oh, dear me. Okay. And I'm going, what? <laughs> How does tapping your cart possibly make me a racist? And he starts yelling at me. Yes, well, you're also an old coot. <laughs> you got called an old coot? Yeah, I, 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 I said, 
I, or not something a, like that, or an old fucker, or something like that. And and I said, but not only are you racist, but you're also an ageist. And I started yelling at him. I got in his face. And, you know, I got to tell you something, I, and I, I'm not being racist when I say this. I live in Harlem. I know this for a fact. A trait of black people, and this is not a racist trait, but the, a trait of black people is they don't like their space invaded. So if you tap their cart... Everybody doesn't like their space No, invaded. more so, more so, it's like you cannot... If it, I just tap the cart. If somebody just tapped my cart... I would go, oh, okay, somebody just tapped my cart. I, it wasn't like I slammed into him. Did it occur to you he might have been having a bad day? Does it occur to you he might be a racist and just hate white people? So I figure I'm going to start, I, I've decided I'm going to become a racist. Uh, because if I'm going to get accused of it, I want to get my money's worth. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because, I mean, God knows, I mean... I mean, I, I, I suppose I'm a racist from the standpoint that I'm white and I didn't grow up black, so I don't know what it's like to be black and walk around in black skin, but I can empathize. Um, and as you know, I never use that, that nasty word we're supposed to use because my father told me you don't use that word. That's the description of a black man who just left the room. Uh, and uh, so I never use that word. Is that what your father said? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I really miss him. I miss, I, of course, I miss him too, and it's been like 40, 50 years. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, so it was, you know, uh, it, it just, to me, it just bothered me because it, 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 to, just using that race card in, on such a trivial matter trivializes racism, mm -hmm. even by a black person doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it was hardly a racist act that I tapped, by accident, his cart. And I didn't do it because he was black, you know. But now that I think about it, I probably did it because he was black. Anyway, you know, it, but what do, you, what do you think? Do you ever have things like that happen? I mean, it's just, it, just, it just completely put off my whole day. Well, one of the things that's happened to me in my old age, and I've kind of noticed, Yeah is I shrug more at things that I used to get angry at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, oh, God, you know, I, I don't have the, maybe it's it's down to very basic, like, I don't have the energy to react. I'm old. <laughs> well, you know, if I did more than just tap the guy, I would have said I was sorry. I mean, if I rammed into him, I certainly would have said I'm sorry. But I didn't, it wasn't even that. It was like just a tap. You know, and, and it could have been because he stopped short or something like that. You gotta that. let it go. Yeah, but no, all I'm saying is, it just, it, it, what bothered me most of all was him trivializing being, you know, black uh, racism by accusing somebody of being racist because they tapped his cart. I'm sorry, that's not the definition of racism. You know? <laughs> well, I, yeah, yeah, I think you have Yeah, a if point. a white person taps a black person's <laughs> cart, he's definitely a racist. But, um, yeah, fuck you. You know, that. can we talk about this stuff on your face? What's what? There's nothing on my face around here. This is my this is my beard. I've always had this. I don't remember ever seeing it. You know what it is? It's, it, longer? It, no, it's it. No, it's the lighting. I'm because I have more lighting. You've never you've seen me more in shadow I before. Understand many, many, many men. I would say at least half the men I ever lay eyes on these days. Yeah have a mustache and then the same kind of you know beard that comes around your mouth like this i think it's really unattractive <laughs> and you know, i, I want to know why men think it's attractive i have had this ronnie for the last <laughs> 30 years i think since i was doing radio in san francisco i had this this style beard well i just never noticed it but it's it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And when I was at WMCA, I had one, but I didn't do this part. So it went kind of like up like this, you know. You remember? No. Oh, well, I'll show, I'll show you pictures. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> you know, I've always had some kind of facial hair. And uh, I think we tend to do it when, we, when we're when we going. I, I Some people, bald people do it, uh, basically because it... To compensate for what's not on it, the top it, of well, your head? Well, it, it just makes... It draws attention, I guess, to the bottom of your face. You know, I, I, on the other hand, as it doesn't, we all know you're bald. <laughs> well, I don't. Anyway, uh, 
Hi, hair here. Yeah. You know, this is kind of hanging out. Everything's a mess. This is what happens when you are bald, from, in my case, chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And then when that's all over and it starts growing back, you just let it do whatever it does. And I haven't had a haircut since I was bald. It's just I'm letting it grow. Yeah. And it's a mess, and it's really hard to take care of. And I need to go have a haircut. And that seems... A lot of work these days i don't know why it's not me cutting it but i'm thinking about maybe i'll just have it shaved i'll go back to being bald again it's so easy yeah you don't do anything well i'll tell you it's not as easy as you think because right now i'm getting to the point where i think i gotta go get a haircut because i like to keep this very short because i learned long ago of a, of a comedian i knew who's now deceased he, he had the same thing where he was going bald. And I used to wear my hair, a lot of hair here and a lot of hair down the back. And uh, he said, cut it all off. It's called preemptive baldness. <laughs> you know, it's more attractive to have a lot of short hair when you're bald than to have a lot of long hair, which then shows how bald you are, you know. And I started, I started cutting my hair very short. But, you know, I go a couple of weeks and then I forget about it. You know. Do you know, during the congressional hearings this week? Yeah. It, by the way, she's saying this week because we're doing this on a on a Saturday. Before, so. so I mean this previous week. The, well, whenever, the, during the hearings, yeah. Um, uh, at the rare times, they took a close-up shot of Justice Roberts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see pictures, and they always do that formal picture of everybody who's on the Supreme Court. They take one every year. And... A few other pictures they take of them. Mostly we don't, you know, we don't see lots of pictures like you do of movie stars or something. Mm -hmm. But you see them and he looks like he's got a nice head of hair. Well, he was sitting up here on the bench. Yes. Above, so saw. he's looking like this down at everybody. And he's got this giant bald spot on top. And I thought that was the oddest thing because his the rest of his head is really luxuriant hair. He's got a lot of hair elsewhere except that one little hole up well, here. Well, he, he that's uh, some people bald that way. They bald in the what's called a bald pate. Okay, and then the front there's a lot oh, of hair. Male baldness. Yeah. Yes. Well, no male pattern baldness is more what I have, where it starts it starts here and moves Who back. Who would know anymore? Huh? Who would know anymore? What would mean? Well, I, I remember how it started. It started here. I remember, but nobody else does. First, first you recede, okay? And then just, it goes back. Now, some people, when they bald, do the bald pate. It's just the, the pate gets bald, right. but the front stays pretty full. Uh, I ch think I saw Chuck Schumer one day when he did this, and he has the bald pate, too. Yes. Yeah, so. And so do I. Really? It's not completely bald, but you can see through what little hair is there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't understand it though. I have two uh, two uh, uh, attorneys, and both of them are Jewish, and both of them have a luxurious head of hair. So did your dad. My dad, no, my dad he was receding. Back a little ways, he was but receding. It was lots yeah. of beautiful hair. But I just, you know, I I think when you're Jewish, you should you you, you it's by law you should have to be bald. <laughs> but, you, know, I mean, you know, but the, I'm, I'm looking at these guys. I'm going, well, maybe being an attorney. You know, and by the way, every attorney also had facial hair, like I have, of one sort or another. Every attorney in that in that uh, place, except, uh, the judge didn't, but the, the attorneys did. And I'm wondering why. And I think, you know, there was a thing for a time where movie directors all had beards. And uh, I think Steven Spielberg explained it once that when you were a young director, especially, you grew facial hair to look older. In other words, to command a certain authority. Uh, but uh, so that's the reason why a lot of, you know, Scorsese had a beard. Uh, uh, you know, Spielberg had a beard. They all, all the big major directors had beards. So Co Coppola. Yeah. Don't have anything to say about well, that. Well, you know, because you don't know anything about growing a beard. Well, you will, though, if you live long enough. You get these little hairs. Well, my yeah, mother, my, teeny hairs my, my, my mother had this one hair when I finally took her to the uh, old folks' home, and they cleaned her up. They had to shave it. She had one hair, and I kept wanting to always go over and just pull out, but yeah. it was like down to here. One hair coming yeah, out of her. It happened to me once until the light was shining in, you know, through the window in the yeah. in the bathroom yeah. one day, 
I thought, what is that? And I thought just it was a loose hair fell out of my head. No, it was stuck to the end of my chin, and nobody had ever mentioned it to me. Yeah, well, I wondered, like, when it went bald, where did all my hair go? And I suddenly realized it went to my ears and my nose. <laughs> yes, that's true. You know? The ailments of old age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's it. Since we're on, this is being shown on your webpage, too, uh, it's all in, in place with the theme that you have about aging, which, you know. What it's really like to get old. Yeah, what it's really like to get old. Is there any, you know, you talk about that, what it's like to get old, and yet is there any one template for what it's like to get old? I mean, doesn't everybody age in a different way? Well, there are certain things, like most men go bald. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of women lose their hair. Mm -hmm. All slow down. We all lose muscle mass. Yeah. Um, we all spread out among all of us millions have different kinds of terrible diseases that afflict many of us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's um, th there are commonalities that because your body stops working as well. So all those kinds of things happen to us. Yeah, those yeah, yeah. are all we have in common. But the big thing we don't have in common is when they happen. We age at very different rates. Mm -hmm. There are 50-year-olds who are decrepit already and there are people in their 80s and 90s who are in great shape who was and, it? Who, who was it? And, and there's no you know it, it's not there's not an age where certain things have at what time and when do you go gray some i started going gray in my mid-30s mm -hmm. you know, um other people i know people my age their hair is brown or whatever color it ever was it's never gone gray yet and yeah. they're well into their 70s and so on well, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I, I, they say baldness for men uh, comes from their, uh, their m m mother's father. If her, if my grandfather. I, I, I would not believe that for no, one second. No, they said that. No, my, not everybody. Because my father had a, had a fairly decent head of hair. My, my maternal grandfather <laughs> was bald as a, as, a, as a billiard cube, you know. So I think that's where I got it from. Well, you can believe anything you want. Well, yeah. Anyway, while we've still got some time here, yes. so you said you, you watched the uh, proceedings. I didn't get to see the, the, the impeachment proceedings because I was in court all day. Um, uh, and, uh, I'm not going to talk about that. You shouldn't do that because then everybody has is going to wonder what the hell was he in court for. You know, it's... Not a good idea <laughs> you to no, leave no. people I, up in the air I, like I, that. I, well, because I murdered somebody and I'm defending myself, okay? No, uh, it, it, the, the audience knows pretty much why I was there. No, uh, nobody knows? No, yes, because it's been an ongoing story on this program about what... The, not on mine, not when it's on my... Well, not yeah. when it's on yours, but this, anyway, the point I'm saying is I was in court and I couldn't watch the proceedings... But every time I saw it, it looked like some guy being uh, boring everybody else standing in front of some marble. I don't think it, it was boring it, at yeah, all. You know? I think those, what are they, six or seven house managers mm -hmm. who were doing all the talking yeah. for the most yeah. I thought it was wonderfully put together that they really used videotape extremely well to make their points. There was, I think it was Wednesday night... I'm pretty sure it was Wednesday night when, um, oh, oh, does that show on your screen? Well, you, you're, now you have you have uh, uh, um, light on your face, and I can see you have a mustache and a beard. Uh -huh. <laughs> a page came up that shouldn't come up, yeah. and did you see it? I mean, did it yeah. was it there on our screen? No, 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 no. Okay, no, no. Um, I just forgot to turn it off. I think. Yeah. At any rate, um, what's his name? Was it Schumer? Yeah. Who um, who just did a wonderful, strong, sensible, smart, pointed recap of the day of mm -hmm. what everybody and they did and they did what what lawyers do in court. They made the whole thing a narrative of explaining all that happened yeah. using video clips wonderfully. I just think they did a masterful job. Yeah. And I and I I followed this so closely that I know most of what they were talking now, about, and I wasn't bored. Were they doing a masterful job because you agreed with them, 
or would it, no, I'm not talking about substance. I'm talking about presentation. Well, what I'm saying is, is that if I if I if I, if I if I were to go to, if I were go to go to a Republican, they might say they did a terrible job. You know, that's they did, what I was talking about. Yeah. Of course, they're going to say that. Yeah. Um, but they don't know anything about television production, and these folks and the Democrats obviously do, or they had somebody um, on somebody advising them. Plus that part, I think they're all attorneys, or all but one or two. Yeah. And they know how to deliver a di a, a, a story right. in a court, which is essentially what they're trying to do. Right. And make it clear. And don't get into the weeds too far that everybody can't understand legal phrases or anything like that. And in that sort, they did a, in that way, they did a, just a wonderful job. They were just, I don't expect him to be convicted. I think that our country is so far gone down the road of whatever not democracy is. Uh, and that the, that that steady forty percent or whatever that support Trump would support him if he did that. What is now, you know, the famous standing in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shooting people. Mm -hmm. um, that they would support him even if he did that. I don't think that there's any way out of that. And I think it will be in your <clears throat> in your in your time with Barbara and and uh, uh, you know setting up interviews with people and so on for her. Did you ever have to deal with Donald Trump? No. It's amazing, because I would have thought at some point there would have been some interview that you guys did with him at one time or it another. There was never a reason. He never did anything worthwhile talking about. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I, I just want to—I I wondered whether you'd ever met up with him. No. I mean, I can't think that he ever in his entire life did something that was remarkable and worth mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you. But, you know— uh, mm -hmm. He sought the lot. Let me put it this way: He sought the limelight. So I would have thought one of the limelights he sought would have been your show. Oh, yeah. but we'd never put him on. Yeah, okay. there was no reason. Yeah. Everybody who was ever on the show, uh -huh. there was a reason beyond their celebrity or fame. Right. Right. Um, that I mean, a lot of times the only way really big stars will do an interview mm -hmm. is that they have a project to promote. Yeah. So they had a movie coming yeah. up, or if it was a. a musician a new album or something and so you go along with that because usually people of the highest celebrity stature will agree to do one at most two interviews to promote something yeah and in those days the barbara walter specialist was so important that that was one that they would seek yeah. out yeah people don't but, re people don't realize that but when people have a movie coming out they actually have it written in their contract how many interviews they will do yes. promoting the movie Yes. And uh, and sometimes they say oh, I'll only do two, and or, or sometimes one. often uh, one. <laughs> well, sometimes they're so big they go I'm not going to do any. Uh, but you know you kind of want to do them because you promote the movie, people go to see the movie, that gives you box office, that gives you a bigger check next time. You know, so uh, you, there's a there's a but they never it's usually they never come out unless they've got something to promote. But do you remember the days when you were at Cavett years ago where somebody would go on the Cavett show and didn't have anything to promote? They just wanted to go on the Cavett show? That was more a discussion show than a Q&A, though. Well, yeah, it, it was it your typical. slightly different sensibility with the public. But what, um, what I'm and, saying... And not that people weren't on that show to promote things, but you're right, sometimes but they weren't. in those days, if they went on Carson, for instance, there were people who went on Carson and had nothing to promote. They just went on Carson. You but know. it kept their name out there. The, the yeah. very top stars wouldn't do that. But I. But today, they really won't come out unless they've got something to promote. Yes. Yeah. So it's all, that's all kind of changed. My yes. how times change. So do you they, have anything to promote? Of course you do. You have timegoesby.net. Well, you can do that so well. I don't the, need to One do of it. the most fabulous sites on the Internet. How's that? <laughs> I like this part. <laughs> yeah, the... the Cupping your hand to your ears. So, what was so? I knew radio announcer. What we used to do, folks, is we would cup our hand to our ear. You know this, because you can hear what you sound like when you do mm -hmm. that. And so, a lot of announcers would ha have the script in one hand and their e hand up to their ear here and be announcing using that as their. But since we have I earphones, have to tell you that's the one thing watching the. 
uh, watching Congress last week and the speakers, yeah. who were, especially Schumer, are so good at what he does. Yeah. But so, but you know, and they were reading. This had all been written for yeah. them, each yeah. of their speeches, and they would get lost. I mean, you know, given how many hours they were spending in Congress, and you have yeah. to eat and sleep too, they probably didn't have a lot of time to study this. But I just, I so wanted to go and kind of help them out, you know, and instruct, yeah. underline this word and slow down when you speak here, yes, then yeah. move this quickly, That's right. and so on. And uh, and it was just, it. I, I just felt like, you know, years and years ago when I used to work for a living, I could have helped them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. But anyway, uh, it, 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 we put our hand to our ear like that. And I, I just know that some people still do that, even though they're wearing earphones. They don't need, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But it's an old habit, it's if old you're old habit. enough. Hey, listen, you're looking swell, baby. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, you. yeah and, uh, Except uh, for the little beard. I oh, just never noticed I'm sorry. It it's because I'm now lighting my face, okay? <laughs> I just happen to not like that kind of beard. You never noticed that I had a beard. Well, if I did, it didn't stand out to me. Well, get used to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, still busting my balls after all these years. <laughs> That's Ronnie Bennett. Time goes by.net. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye.